Hey, everybody. Hey, so it took me a long time to get to this next step. Um, I've been doing a lot of dry fitting for almost a week, I guess. Um, I like to get it right. I like to try to do different things. Um, with the stack height here, um, you're not limited. Well, you are limited, really, but um, the stack height's not that bad, but I was just trying to figure out exactly kind of what to do here. So... Um, what I ended up doing was the ESC came with um, rubber grommets that had a tall side and a short side. Um, never seen that before on this big of uh, an ESC. You see them on the whoop board sometimes. Um, so what I did was I actually put the big side on the bottom and the small side on the top. So it gives me enough, um, enough coverage here, you can see, that uh, you know even if it squishes down, it's not gonna touch the plate so we're good there um the connector for the esc cable to the flight controller it sits right on the uh, right on the frame but it's plastic so it's not going to make a big difference but the one thing i like is um i don't use nylon screws i like the regular metal screws because um i don't care about extra weight um i think that using these kind of screws the weight um, is minimal at best so but the thing is is in a crash these things aren't going anywhere um if you got the nylon ones they've always been breaking on me and i seem to crash more than fly so um just trying to find the right height um as you can see if i put the top plate on these screws will just about clear it which is good um you know it's close but even if this gets pressed down it's not going to make a difference so because um, i'm going to try to put my um I'm gonna try to put the VTX on top. I'm gonna to put the flight controller on there, uh, but that's for another video. Right now, we're gonna do, um, we're gonna solder up the um, XT60. I was gonna say 30, XT60, and um, we'll throw one motor on, and then um, I'll kill the video and do the other the other three. Um, it's kind of boring if you're sitting there watching me do four motors. I mean, that's kind of crazy. So. Um, but, and the one thing that drives me nuts, <clears throat> I'm just going to go off on a tangent for a bit. Motors always come with screws, but a lot of times, and I know you can agree with me, a lot of times the screws are either too long or too short. And what I think is the frame manufacturers should give you the screws because they know the thickness of the arm. And so they know how tall the, you know, the screw should be. Um, and for just about every motor, it's the same, but um, the motors that I'm using um, on this build are the Emax RS2 2207. Uh, these are 2550 kV, but Emax is nice. They're great because they give you two sets of screws, one for a three millimeter arm and one for the four. Um, so as you can see, this gives me perfect clearance this is for the four millimeter and you can see that when I get it in there it's gonna be a little bit above but that's fine because it's not gonna to touch the uh, the windings um, so that'll be good so um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the motor on first and what I do is for the motors anyway some people do it for the frame but not the you know for the frame as well I'm gonna do some um, some thread lock what I do is I just put it a little bit there and then what I just do is I just take the screw and I just just dab a little bit. You don't need a lot. Um, and we are going to get this and get my two millimeter. And we won't tighten it up right yet so I can line the other holes. And if I can grab the screw, and we can do the next one. And I'll do it down here. So we actually know, oops, so we know the spacing. Yeah, I can't seem to get it. All right, let's. And did I get it? Yep, I got it. 
So we'll tighten this up a little bit. Tighten that up and you can see that looks good in there. Oh, another thing about motors is that, as you can see in there, there's a screw there. Um, some motors have C-clips and some have screws. Screws are way better. If you need to take the bell off, um, you don't have to mess with C-clips. I have a couple of motors that did that. I have one that actually C-clip fell off. I don't know how, but um, the screw is so much easier. So um, if you can, you find out in advance if your motor has a screw or a C-clip, and I'd stick with the screw myself. All right, so we're gonna get the third. Screw in here and the fourth. All right, we're going to snug these down. All right, so this top plate out of the way so what I think I'm going to do is with this um, I like to make them as neat as possible and just being me I like to keep these flat um, I was going to put some heat shrink on them but I'm not going to I'm not going to do that I just usually wrap it in tape but it's usually good enough um, good enough for me anyway so I'm going to actually feed these around and I'm going to bring them down this way but what I'm going to do first is, is I'm going to do the XT60 because I want to make sure that I have enough room to put these wires between the post and the pads. So, um, and pretty soon you're going to hear a battery charger beeping because I'm charging a battery. But uh, I already got my soldering iron heated up. Um, for the battery pads, I do. 450 I know that's kind of high but battery pads are yeah they just they just stink so uh, usually what I do is I got a flux pen I try not to put too much sometimes it just oozes out like crazy like right now I think it's oozing out a little bit but and we shall put negative side is usually a little bit harder because it takes more heat so I try not to I try to try to do it the best I can but uh... all right that seems like it's good No, I'm no king solderer, but I think I'm all right at times. It's just that the battery battery leads are really tough. Now, one thing I've heard and kind of seen myself is that the solder that comes on these things, like if they're pre-soldered, a lot of times they're just cheap. So what I try to do is I just uh, I just heat it up real quick and kind of just put my own over it just just to be safe because especially on the battery you don't want crap solder and um, there we go and come on stay still Alright. And 
we're ready to go. Um, that negative pad looks kind of kind of wonky here. What's up with that? I hate the negative pads. I really do. All right, so. And of course, you got to make sure that you know where your positive and negative is because it wouldn't be cool if you uh, kind of mess those up. That would not be nice. Oh, come on, you negative pad. Oh. Yeah, we go solder blobs. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Yeah, as I bridge the pads too. Now nah, they look good. All right, so I'm gonna dab a little more flux. Probably put a little on here to make sure that uh, and we will start with the negative. these pads. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. Oh, come on. I can hear my ESC frying right about now. do is I just kind of heat up these a little separately in that way there we go oh look at that and It's not even in there, really. I gotta get the, gotta get the heated up again. Unfortunately, and there we go. Uh, the negative one doesn't look that good. Uh, See if we can do this. And my ESC is saying, don't fry me, don't fry me. What the heck happened to the positive? Oh, it just freaking melted. Wow, that's weird. Uh, I usually do a better job than this. I don't know what the heck's going on here.
Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, that's actually, well, definitely not my best, but. Yeah, yeah, well. But, yeah, I think that's okay. pull it off there and it's not coming off so all right well I guess that's that <sighs> so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna tin all of these You want them shiny, they're shiny, and I think that's, I think there's enough there between that and having the wire on them. Oops, sort of blub. Okay, dab some flux on this. Make sure it's not too much. There we go. Alright, flip this back over. And what I'm going to do is... Um, yeah, if I can get these wires straight. Now what I'll probably do is, yeah, I'll wrap these around. Let's get the clips, figure out how I want to put this.
All right. Hope nobody's uh, bored right about now. Uh, what do I... Don't want to take too much off. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. Use the tweezers this time. Yeesh, maybe I won't. And maybe I'll just use these. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can't. Uh can't figure this out. Number one, nice and shiny, gotta like it. So let's get the length of the second one. Leaving too much, which is good. And let's go ahead and get this all tinned up. one and bend it around and it's not too smart to use your fingers because the wire is going to get super hot so and got to be careful for the fet fets are oh hey my battery's done number two and uh, I'm gonna have to put this on top well actually you know, I can clip a little off Off. 
Yeah, it looks pretty good. Kind of keeping it neat. I'm gonna wrap. I'm gonna wrap this all the way up to about here and keep it close. But before I can do that, um, I guess Armitan sells these things called bolt savers, but they're more like arm savers. What they are is there's two carbon fiber squares that fit between the rear arms and one you know one fits in the rear one fits in the front and it keeps the arms from moving because these have separate arms instead of like the chameleon and even the marmot that has um, a solid frame so I ordered them about a week and a half ago and of course they're taking forever so um, I'm probably still gonna get the motors in um, but I'm going to um, have to Pull them apart really i should have put the should have put the thread lock on here but that's okay um because i'm gonna have to pull the arms to get them in i'm not sure how well actually yeah i could probably just lift it without it so maybe i'll still do it anyway but uh all right so there's one and i'm not going to bore you with the other three so i'll get those done and uh then we'll be right back all right so um everything is done and as you can see, it looks really good. It looks kind of shiny. Not kind of shiny. It's supposed to look shiny. It's supposed to be. Um, you know, the small stuff I can solder easily, even on flight controllers and even little 16 by 16s. But the battery, ugh, I don't know. It's just, it's just real tough for me. Actually, what I did was I ended up just uh, kind of cleaning it up a little bit. So it looks a little better, but I don't know. It's just, they're just really hard for me. But um, also, this would look a little better with, you know, I'm going to, you know put tape on the arms and stuff but like i said earlier i'm going to get the um arm savers or bolt savers whatever they want to call it um to put in between here so i really don't want to tie these down um too tight right now because i'm going to end up pulling the arms to put them in so um what i might even do is i'll i'll do a video for the uh for those arm saver things not a lot of people knew that they existed from what i'm hearing so um so i'll do that and um you know then button everything up like that and you know then continue with the flight controller so um so yeah looks really good and um whenever those come in i have no idea because they're like in i don't know asia europe somewhere i don't know where the heck they are but um hopefully they'll come soon and then we can do another video and uh, show you how those work until then take care um practice your social dis bleh. oh man i hate that word um but you know what i mean Stay safe, um, get out and fly and have fun and uh, we'll see you next time.